Sometimes in programming, problems that are difficult can be made easier by breaking them into smaller parts. Recursion is such a technique. You break a problem into a small part that is repeatable and then you repeat that small part in order to solve the larger problem. In this video, we're going to take a look at recursion using a JavaScript example and help to understand recursion. Sometimes recursion is not as simple to understand as a loop. It's a similar concept. You're looping through the same process, but there are some unique differences that make it a little bit more difficult to understand. So let's first take a look at some concepts that help us to understand recursion. First, a recursive function simply calls itself. That's really the definition of a recursive function is it's calling itself. And then another important concept is a recursive function has two main parts. And let's take a look at what those two parts are. First, there needs to be a terminating condition. And this is sometimes called the base case. This terminating condition is what causes the function to not be called again. Otherwise, we would continue to call that same function over and over and, of course, would be in an infinite loop that would give us all kinds of headaches. Now, the other main part is the recursive case. This is the portion of the function that calls itself. So both of these parts are important when you're setting up a recursive function. Now, recursion can be very effective in manipulating tree structures, such as XML or the DOM, or even a tree structure of an object composed of other objects. And the reason this can be effective is each call gets a smaller piece of the tree structure to work on. Now, for this video, we're going to be doing a factorial problem because I think it's easier to demonstrate how recursion works with this particular problem where we're sim simply working with numbers. Now, for those of you that have been away from math class for a while, uh, factorial is simply the product of an in integer and all of the integers below it. So, for example, factorial 5 is equal to 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Now, this can be solved with a loop, obviously, but it also is a great case to solve it with recursion. So, that's what we're going to do. So, let me jump to Sublime and we'll set that up first and then we'll describe how it works to help with the understanding of recursion. All right, so first let me set up my function. I'm going to assign it to a variable factorial. So here's the structure of our function. Now what I'd like to do first is take a look at the recursive case. Remember, that is the portion of the recursive function that calls itself. Now, with this function, we're going to pass in a number. And then whatever number is passed in will return the factorial of that. And so to simplify that problem, this is really a matter of multiplying the number by the number that is one less than that and repeating that small piece of code multiple times. So that's decomposing the problem into a small subset and then we can repeat that subset, which makes it ideal for recursion. So if we just look at that small subset, that would be return num times num minus 1. Now, obviously, that's not going to give us the true result unless the number passed in is 2. Anything above 2, we're just going to get the, the first two numbers multiplied together. So the way we can repeat that 
using recursion is to call the function again using the second number. So multiply number by num minus one, but do a call to the function. Now, in order to be able to call the function, it's a good idea to give your function a name. Right now, we have a function expression. It's assigned to a variable factorial, but it's unnamed. We can create a named function expression, or we could simply do a function declaration. Either way, that would assign a name to our function, and that's the best technique for calling a function from inside itself. So let me put the name just FAC. It could be exactly the same as the variable, but I want to use a different term for purpose we'll see later when I'm illustrating how this works. So now that we have a name associated with our function, we can call it again with a smaller number. So what's going to happen here? When this function is called, it's going to return number times, but then it's immediately going to call a function again. And so that's going to come up and call itself. So be number times num minus one. Then it's going to immediately call again. And so it will go through that and it will continue to go through that forever unless we include a terminating condition. So let's add that up here. Now that condition should be if num is equal to one. That's when we want this to end. Now how can we terminate this? Well, when num is equal to one, we can simply return one because that's what should be returned anyway. We can simply return one and without calling the function again, that's going to put an end to our recursive calls. Here we're returning a number and then calling the function again. Here we will just return the number. And that will put an end to it. All right, now let me just add a few lines so we can see what the final result is. And we'll just pass in a five, a factorial of five. We'll use work with a simple number here. And I'll just log that to the console so we can see what the result is. Let me save that. And let's jump out and refresh our page and then show the console. And there we see the number it returns is 120, which is the factorial of 5. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 4 is 24. Then 24 times 5 is 120. So let me jump out to Sublime again. And let's decompose this a bit and see what's happening as this function executes. So the first time through, number equals 5. It returns num, but before it can return the final results, it invokes another function. And the function that it invokes happens to be the same function we're in. And this time it passes in a 4. So in that case it returns a 4, but before it's able to return the final result, it invokes a function again, this time with a three. Three before it's able to return the final result, it invokes it again to a two, and then to a one. And when it says it's equal to one, it simply returns one. Because another function is not invoked at that time, it is able to unwind the stack and return the final results. So each time a new function is invoked, it's added to the stack. And so we have multiple things in the stack. Once it stops invoking another function, then it's able to unwind that stack and return the final results by multiplying all those numbers together. All right, let's look at what I just described illustrated textually. So first time it's called, this is what we get. Five times and then invoking fact with a four. And so now we have this, and then this, so 5 times 4 times 3 times invoking the function again with a 2, and then invoking it with a 1, and that returns a 1. 
at that point we get this and this is where it begins unwinding the stack it multiplies one by two gets a two multiplies three by two gets a six four by six gets a 24 five by 24 and we get the final results and that's what gets returned and placed in the variable so that's what's happening in our function that's how recursion is working now let's try one more way of illustrating this to make sure it's understood so I'm gonna put a break statement and open up the debugger and we'll follow this through in the debugger so let me access the console I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the source here that's the line I want to pause on within the debugger now let's go ahead and refresh our page and it stops right there now I'm going to bring this part of the debugger up so we can see what's going on over here in the call stack is the part I want you to pay attention to as well as what the number variable is equal to each time this function is called right now it's equal to five this is the first time it's called and we've had it pause at this line here so num is equal to five and that's showing down here in the scope as well we've called it once so it's showing once in the call stack let's step through the code execution some more so I've caused it to move to the next call now we're seeing a call stack we have this function called twice so initially the function was called anonymously which is right here that's where the call happened the function that's assigned to this variable factorial was invoked and then from there it has begun to call itself using the name we assigned to the function FAC so we're seeing that show up twice now in our call stack also notice that the second time through num is equal to four and that's showing in the local variable here as well so let's keep moving through this there's three times it's going to be called four times before it begins unwinding the stack so right now num is equal to two next time num will be equal to one and it's simply going to return one it will not call itself again so let's see how that works so now num is equal to one it returned it and so now we're down here at the bottom of this function so we're waiting for the return value which it needs to return to this variable final so in order to get that return value we need to unwind the stack so let's see how that's done and notice how the return value increments as we do that right now two times one it's working on the return value so, so two times one is equal to two and then six because we multiplied the three in notice num is equal to three then 24 and then 120 and now we're ready to return the value so we unwind the final and we can just resume the execution and we should get 120 at the console so that's another way to see how recursion is working I hope you found that helpful I hope that helped demystify recursion a bit for you if you found this tutorial helpful I'd appreciate you liking the video you can also click the video link in the middle if you'd like to view another video from our YouTube channel to subscribe to our YouTube channel click the circle link on the left we have a new video each week and to visit our website where we have courses and other resources on JavaScript, you can click the link on the right. Thanks for watching.